Support for The Okie Show Show is provided by the Oklahoma Film and Music Office. As the entertainment industry continues to flourish both globally and here in Oklahoma, the need for the continued development and expansion of our local film industry workforce and companies is critical. Join the action and start your new career in the Oklahoma film industry. Find out more at okfilmmusic.org forward slash getting started. Are you an aspiring actor? Or maybe you're a filmmaker looking to cast your film. Magnet Talent has been in business for over 25 years and represents an extremely diverse talent pool for work in film, TV, print, voiceover, live appearances, and a whole lot more. Magnet Talent accepts talent from the state of Oklahoma who have professional, industry standard headshots, as well as considerable training and experience in the industry. Check them out at www.magnatalent.com. Magna can also be found Found on social media, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Check out Magna Talent for all of your acting needs. Hello and welcome to the podcast that explores the heartlands, entertainment industries. I'm Brian. And I'm Nick. And we're back for season five. Oh, it's been so long I've been i care so much i waiting. care so much about this this new season that i actually am not wearing a ball cap i i made my uh-huh. i did my hair you're looking presentable i wore my glasses to look smarter for this you new season super smart and, and then there's nick <laughs> and i am growing out my covid hair as long as i can get it you're and whenever looking you're looking a little homeless Dimitri Martin over here. <laughs> yeah. I would, I, that's, I'll take that as a huge compliment. Thank you. <laughs> you should. Good looking dude. He's good looking. You should. Um, you're, but you're yeah, I'll take homeless. Funny. I'll take homeless Dimitri Martin. Yeah. Me and him both got big noses. Sizable. <laughs> His is long. Mine's wide, but it's the same brotherhood. So but, uh, how, how's cut my how's hair going? in months? This is, this is the result. This is, the result of not leaving the house for a long, long, long time. How long have you just been holed up in the house? At this uh, point? Months. Like I've started, I've been uh, working from home basically this whole year, or at least until uh, by the time everything was shutting down, I was full on working at home. So I have just been locked in here for months, man. Like I've been talking, I've been talking to the animals. I've been talking to plants, man. We don't even even have plants. I think they're ghost plants. How about you? Soil. (laughs) Yeah. I just, I'm just talking to the soil and what could potentially be a plant. Yeah. But how about you? How are you doing? Mr. Presentable, man, I've been freaking working my little butt off. I like, I have actually forced myself to, to take a little time off. Yeah. Because now that, like, well, productions have slowed down, but I've also got the handyman side business. So, like, between those two, it's just been nonstop because the floodgates for productions have opened in Oklahoma because everything on the coast is is still basically shut down. Mm -hmm. So, there's that. Uh, and then, like with and handyman been, stuff, turns out yeah, you've whenever been, people you've been uh, hired on the handyman to fix those those floodgates opening, right? Good lord! Yeah, yeah, close those. Used to be that like I would have chunks of time between productions, and now those chunks of time are gone. I have <laughs> um, something always needs to be fixed, and I'm not complaining because beggars can't be choosers. But yeah, uh, but you miss your chunks a little bit, right? I'm, I kind of miss my chunks just a little bit, just He's, a little bit. I kind of I miss being lazy a little bit. Yeah. Now yeah. I literally have no idea how to take a day off. I haven't worn actual pants in like months. It's either like the no pants or sweatpants or short pants, one of those three variables. But no, like actual classy going out type pants have been worn. And see, for me, I keep buying new pants that are instantly ruined as soon as I start working again. <laughs> like I blew the knees out in every pair of pants that I have. Oh, I was now. about I was about to say, well, Brian, you are allowed to go to the bathroom on these sets. <laughs> I keep blowing them out, man. <laughs> I keep blowing every I just keep buying all these pairs of pants. 
and they keep feeding me chili and what am i supposed to do you can use the bathroom dude please actually wow 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 yeah so i I keep having to buy new pants because i keep shredding the knees or getting paint or plaster or glue or whatever on them Yeah, you are full on becoming mr fix it you fixed, you fixed my uh, garbage disposal, and it's working like a charm. Still I'm saying, I'm and saying, was, and it was super reassuring when you finished, and you were like, "Well, that was my first one." <laughs> I've never done that before. Awesome, but no, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's it's working. It's working overtime. I just go shove stuff in there and just let it go. Just cause, just cause, because I'm bored. I watched all the shows. There's no more shows to watch. PS5 is already out and over with. Uh huh. It's it's done. For, we're on to the PS17 now. Golly, it's it's been a while, man. <laughs> we got to start doing these seasons quicker. <laughs> I'm saying, just I saying. Know, like, we, we, we we last time last time uh, everybody on iTunes saw us. It was when was it? It was August. It was May. Like, it was May. It now it's January. And so we've had a nice six months. Has it, has it been six months? I think it's been six months. Oh, my gosh. Been on a, been on a half year break, man. This Ooh. job is a grind, man. It's like you're working for six months and then you're off for six months. You Crazy, know what I mean? Bra. Well, this new season's going to be fan freaking. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> right. Are you sure you want to make that guarantee? Are you We've sure? We've got like- the biggest guests coming on the show <laughs> are you are, are we are we certain this is going to be amazing we don't want to have to go back and like edit this if it's not going to be amazing. it's going to be the greatest of all podcasts i can't even tell you how great it's going to be you've gotten into hand puppets i love it <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic it's fantastic speaking of which today we have uh grant leatherwood and laura ketchum who uh, Grant is the producer and uh, Laura is the lead writer of the faith-based kids series Connect, which is produced through Life Church, but you can watch it pretty much everywhere. It's all on YouTube and, and just all over the place. And it's a really, really fun show. I've gotten to work with them for the past, I want to say like five years or so. And well, geez, brag about it. And uh, let me tell you, what we put out is phenomenal. <laughs> Ooh. You get on YouTube, you can see my little phenomenal dance. It's pretty adequate. Your, so, phenom- <laughs> your phenomenal dance is very adequate. It is <laughs> adequate. <laughs> but today we're going to talk to uh, Grant and Laura about the workflow of how to... It's a multicam sitcom. I mean, like we're cramming out episodes after episode. And I just wanted to talk to them about how exactly they make this happen. Because this is like one of those things that I, I think... Like just a sitcom in general would be like a dream to produce. Oh, so yeah. how do we produce a sitcom? Let's find out. <laughs> so we're here with Laura Ketchum and Grant Leatherwood. Welcome to the podcast. How are you guys? Yeah. Great. So glad to have you on the show. This is actually our first episode back for season five of the Okie Show Show. Wow. Mm-hmm. Kicking it off with a big one. Today we are talking about Connect the kids show that you guys produce. Um, so just going right out the gate, tell us a little bit about what exactly Connect is. Connect is the show that Live Church creates for first through third graders. And so it airs every weekend um, in their, I mean, I don't know if you'd call it Sunday school or rooms or whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it also airs on YouTube and it just imparts, you know, Bible stories and verses and that sort of thing. But every episode also has, you know, like a plot and recurring characters and sets and that sort of thing. So I love sets. Sets are great. (laughs) Sets are great. They sure are. (laughs) They're big. They're dangerous. We love them. That's awesome. (laughs) And Connect has been, uh, how long have you guys been producing the show? So, at least I have been a part of the show uh, for about four and a half years. It'll be five in, uh, in May. But before me, it had been going on for, I want to say like four more years, maybe three. So it's oh like gosh. eight or nine, right? right. Lord, does that sound right? It's not long. It's in its ninth 
I think we're getting ready for season nine. Yes. In oh 2021. Gosh. And I'm not sure how the seasons were split up. So right now it's Connect HQ, which is a different yes. iteration mm-hmm. the last four years than what it was before when it was set on a space station. Yes. Okay. And uh, I, was, I was there for the twilight years of that. <laughs> twilight. twilight season, I guess you'd call it. But uh, it's, been, it's been going. It's like some of our, we have a couple actors who have been with the show since the start and they've mm-hmm. been around for a while. Yes. None of, none of the kid actors, right? Because that'd be no. <laughs> a little hard. <laughs> like, you know what? That baby's got some talent. Yeah. We should see them through. <laughs> that baby has a mustache at yeah. this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew we had something in common there. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like in Hannah Montana that like yeah. the brother was actually like 35 years like old? Like 35 years old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or that, uh, or that kid from Game of Thrones. He's actually like 40 or something. Right. Always perpetually right. that 12-year-old. Yeah. It's it's just crazy to me that you guys have been going for this long, and it's a multicam sitcom, which m- minus like the laugh track and the, there's no st- live studio audience or anything like that. But I want to talk to you guys about the workflow of producing, kind of from beginning to end, a multicam sitcom. That you're now in your ninth season, possibly five thousandth season. We don't know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're challenging you're challenging the Simpsons and Bonanza. You're going to come after those two. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. So w- what's the workflow like? Like do, let, let's start with you Laura because you're the lead writer on the show. Yeah. How does it start from the the writing process? So before I do anything, my coworker Sam, she is the director of children's content for ages like newborn through third grade. And so Connect falls in her realm. And so she will develop teaching topics for a month's worth of episodes, which is usually four episodes. And so for like January 2021, uh, the theme is truth. And so all four episodes have to deal with truth. And so she will figure out what each episode we're going to try and teach in that episode. And then once she has ironed out all the teaching topics, she gives those to me. And at that point, I schedule three meetings, a brainstorm, a thrashing, and a read-through. And we have the brainstorm pretty quickly after that. And so it's me, it's Grant Leatherwood and the other Grant and a few other people. And we figure out for each episode what we want to happen story-wise. And usually I come with an idea in mind for every episode. And sometimes we go with my idea and sometimes someone else brings up a really great idea and that's what we end up going with. And um, so we figure that out. If we have contractors working with us that month, writing wise, I will send them all out assignments. And usually we have about a week between the brainstorm and the thrashing for writing the first draft. And then I'll get all the first drafts back and I'll bring them to the thrashing. And all of us who were in the brainstorm and a few other people, we will thrash the scripts. We will read through them and we will say everything that's bad about them <laughs> and the good things too. Yeah. Paying special attention to the bad things. <laughs> and I will compile all of the feedback from the thrashing, send it out to contractors or myself. And um, then we have another week for editing and then we have the read through which is the same thing except hopefully the scripts aren't as bad less thrashing less thrashing yeah. <laughs> and then at that point it's up to me to get the scripts locked to lock them they're like good to go and so if any changes need to be made i will make them and then once i'm like okay they're good they're locked i will message grant nice yep Do you guys, like, because there's a lot of comedy in these scripts, like, Mm -hmm. for the audience, if you, for the listeners out there, if you have not gotten to see Connect, I I definitely encourage you to, and there should be a link in the description of this podcast. Especially if you're in the first to third grade. Oh, we have a, we have a, we have a, if you're listening to this podcast (laughs) and you are in the first to third grade, (laughs) go to bed, don't listen to any other episode of this show. And first of all, bed. what are you doing here? But first since you're here, <laughs> yeah, do some stuff made yeah. ex- exactly these, for you. Just some second episodes. Sip in his I'm, coffee. I'm <laughs> always um, very pleasantly surprised with the the level of comedy that are in these episodes. 
um, just because comedy is is mm-hmm. kind of a passion of Nick and I, and like so we understand how difficult it is to to write comedy that is not faith based and that is not kid friendly and all that kind of like comedy just on its face is hard. But you mm-hmm. guys are doing clean comedy and you're doing <clears throat> clean comedy for kids, mm-hmm. and you're doing a clean comedy for kids at a faith-based <laughs> scenario which yeah. is like the level of difficulty just keeps growing and growing <laughs> yeah so like tell me about that like tell me about the comedy aspects of these scripts like laura you're, you're the stuff that you write is really freaking funny oh thanks <laughs> <laughs> um i mean one we do have good contractors and a lot of times they'll hand in stuff which we'll just all be laughing during thrashings or read throughs because it's just solid, funny stuff. As far as how I write my scripts and include humor, usually I just think if it's not like, I I just assume that kids will laugh at whatever I laugh at. (laughs) (laughs) As long as I like keep the vocabulary within, you know, the realm of what they would understand and, have situations that are kind of like they can see themselves being in that sort of situation Um, that I'll just, I just figure, you know, they'll get it. And if they don't, other people will be laughing. So they'll, I feel like when I was young, I would laugh at things because my parents laughed at them, even though I didn't understand why it was funny. But then I figured out as I got older, why it was funny. (laughs) I just figure I'm educated. (laughs) First well, of all, Brian, we need to steal that idea. So for all of our sketches, whenever someone says a line, they just have to start laughing a lot. Like, yeah. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, second, Laura, do you do? Do you ever do any like um, watching? You know, kid shows to type, kind of like get in that mindset or anything. You popping on Dora while you're writing? <laughs> Definitely not. No, not Dora. Uh, no, most of the stuff I watch is just your average sort of. Uh, adult sitcom and I don't watch a lot of I watched a lot of kids shows growing up and I'm sure that that had an right. impression on me mm-hmm. I loved watching cartoons and anything with slapstick sort of humor and slapstick sort of humor is always going to you know go over well with kids mm-hmm. and we include that when we can um, but I think funny is always funny and kids pick up more on adult sort of humor, not adult humor, but right. things that adults are laughing at mm-hmm. more so than we realize sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Funny is funny. And uh, Laura is, I, I would say, particularly gifted in that we, we have a unique challenge that it's, it's for first through third graders, but it's like, I think whenever you're set, w- whenever you're given that challenge, like your immediate instinct is to like play everything down or to write down uh, to like maybe like the first grade level or, or the lowest level that's going to be the audience. But no, we, uh, we write because like kids are smart. Mm-hmm. They're going to know the, the subtext that's going on in these, in these episodes. So we're not just like laying it on just like a single through point. Here's the story and that's it, A to B. Uh, so uh, Laura has like done a really good job of, of overcoming that challenge while also making it entertaining to watch at the same time. And w- whenever we're in the brainstorms and stuff, it's like we create these scenes that it's like, what if Mike did this? What if Alyssa responded this way or something? If it's funny to us, it's probably going to be funny to the actors. And that's going to translate to the episode. And it's going to be funny to the kids, too, because we're all enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think that there's also something to be said about the, the power of your cast. And like, Grant, we were having this conversation the other day mm-hmm. of like your cast is so solid like, I feel like the, the cast that you guys have on Connect could totally translate over to a Disney Channel show or totally d- pretty much anything. Like, you guys, the, the, the cast is so good performance wise and they're so naturally funny. And when you have a great cast paired with a great writer that you're, 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 you're writing specifically for certain cast members and stuff, can you talk a little bit about that? When I first came on as writer, it wasn't typical for writers to be on set (laughs) during shoots. And I was just like, but I don't know how any of these people actually, you know, deal with the writing that they're hearing. And so I did make a point to be on set initially, just so I could see how they did with what I was writing and was just consistently 
surprised and encouraged and elated by how well they did with what I was writing. Um, and I got to know them and how they acted because of that. And so I just had to learn a little bit, you know, what actors do best with certain type of material and, um, and then try my best to cater to them or change things if need be. And a lot of times when we have thrashings and read throughs, that's some of the discussion we have is would a particular actor handle something like this? Well, and we make changes if we need to make changes. And, and I, I would think a lot of the time our actors, like we, we, we might come up with a character in mind and we have like uh, how they're going to behave or how they're going to react to things or something like that, who this person's going to be, even though we maybe haven't cast them yet. And after we cast them and that person shows up on set, one, they may bring a performance uh, to lines that uh, Laura's written in a different way than we all expected. And then it's like, oh, wait, that's actually pretty great. Like, maybe let's lean into that. And then it's like where this character is and where this actor is become like they, they merge. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Laura does a really good job while she's on set of noting who, ha where people thrive. And then it's like, okay, well, in that case, let's take this character and let's drive home their strengths as an actor. And then let's make them funny this way or let's make them dramatic this way. So, you know, we have kind of like, a starting point for everyone, but it's always going to change a little bit based on what that actor brings to the table. For sure. Laura, do you ever kind of go on a power trip of just like, you better be nice to me. <laughs> I, I control the words you say. I'll kill you off. <laughs> sure that I've said something like that in a, you know, funny sort of way. Right, right. Yeah. With, an, with an undertone of, I'm serious. Try not to yeah. lord it over yeah. people. Got it. <laughs> So this may be a little late in the, this game to ask, but I have not seen the show. I am not in first, second, or third grade. We're a very uh, professional podcast. We do our research. I keep my viewing <laughs> to a fourth grade level. Uh, okay. um, but uh, just what is the, uh, what's the general plot of the show or the premise of the show? Good question. Uh, yeah. It takes place at Connect HQ. Um, which is, an, Connect is an organization that exists to help answer questions kids have that they, you know, are struggling with. If they're coming into some sort of challenge or some sort of struggle, they can write or come physically to Connect HQ. Yeah. And the kids and adults who work at Connect HQ will try to track down um, a Bible story, a Bible verse, a point, which is just some sort of general takeaway sentence that the kids can take home with them. And then just other like good teaching to answer this kid's question. That's most of the time. Sometimes we also have episodes where there's sort of internal struggles going on at Connect HQ too. Okay. Uh, drama. Right. There is right. Drama sometimes. <laughs> there's drama. And, um, yeah. and so, yeah, that, that is, that's it. It sounds excellent. It. It's like uh, it's like if Ask Jeeves were a show. And it had a <laughs> there you go. It's our new tagline. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There it is. Which kind of brings us to I'm I'm gonna treat that as a segue into production. Now we're in production, so we have our scripts, our piles of scripts pages upon pages that we have to get in the Pile can. Stacks. Yeah, usually we I, I don't know what to do with them. What do we do it's, with all these scripts? Like, oh, Laura, all you did was bring me a fire hazard. <laughs> we can use our computers. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got to shoot the things. And um, I think just from, from my standpoint as the contract sound guy that comes in, uh, the first noticeable thing is that you guys shoot on a soundstage. And you have your sets already there. Can you kind of describe what it looks like inside the soundstage there? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the the way this the I guess the the studio itself is, uh, I mean, big giant room, and you've got uh, black insulation everywhere. Uh, and <laughs> we have uh, the Connect set is pretty much it. Pretty much takes up all of one side of the studio. Uh, so we have east and west. The west wing is pretty much all. Sorry, the west side. 
It's pretty much all, all the West Wing. Yeah, 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 the president. Yeah, Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> Aaron Sorkin is shooting his show right yeah. next door. <laughs> it's it's a pre, it's a mess. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they're always doing walk and talks, right? In all all the, the time, all the time, just walking into our shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Aaron, come on! I know you're making a masterpiece or whatever. Uh, <laughs> Gr- great dialogue. We're trying to work. Love the commentary, but can we please move on? Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, so and we have a three wall set. Uh, So we have uh, four different rooms that we go to. We have the hub, we have the lounge, the observatory, and then we have a field office, which has a green screen, which could be anywhere. Um, Or also like a group room that uh, can be different groups that help out at Connect HQ. So with those three, with those sets, we have the three walls and then the outermost is the hub. And then whenever we make a, a set change or a flip, as we call it, we wheel in each of those three walls just directly in front of the, uh, of the other ones. So it goes hub, we wheel in the three to the lounge, we wheel in the three to the observatory and so on. And we have uh, all of these different lights rigged up. Um, we have kind of a combination of space forces, uh, chroma cue space forces, a uh, bunch of color forces, studio forces, phosphors, all that stuff. Uh, so they're, uh, uh, different lighting cues that also have different color cues based on uh, the Kinect color scheme. Cause it's like a lot of blues and greens that we use. So we use a lot of different colored lights and stuff in that too. And uh, whenever we are shooting those episodes, I try to schedule them so that we are getting all of our hub scenes out of the way first and then lounge and then move on to observatory. And since most of the time we shoot two uh, episodes a day, then the second episode that we shoot after lunch is the reverse of that. So we start in the observatory, then peel the observatory back. Yeah. And now we're shooting in the lounge, peel the lounge back. Now we're shooting in the hub. Yeah. So that's like a jigsaw puzzle of scheduling. It yep. is a wonder of efficiency. And that is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's really cool. Cap. And it's really brilliant the way that you guys have organized the whole thing. And I feel very useless during the flips. Cause I just kind of <laughs> sit back by my car. Yeah, and- yeah. But to be fair, <laughs> You're always a little useless, right? <laughs> I mean, and I've kind of gotten used to it. I'm just like, uh, well, this is my lot in life. Well, but, but Brian's, Brian's arms are his moneymakers. we got to protect <laughs> yeah. those at all yeah. costs. So <laughs> he, he say, no, keeps, no, no. Brian keeps like trying to hold up walls. We're like, no, 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 no. Brian, put that put down. That down. Come, well, You're going to blow, hear blow a hole in that wall. Brian, come on. <laughs> protect those babies. <laughs> Back in the gloves. Let's go. I thought I thought his face was the money maker. <laughs> oh well, okay. oh definitely that's... not. <laughs> <laughs> that that busted thing couldn't make a dime. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, with the uh, with our cast, like we have, uh, ooh, Laura, what is it like? Nine nine recurring characters, nine main characters essentially right nine, now. Well, eight now. Eight, eight, and then we have like two to four. I would say like recurring characters right. that show up. Uh, throughout any shoot too. So that's, you know, we're looking at 12 to possibly 15 people whose schedules we're all trying to work around. So that's why I communicate our shoot day, days and weeks as soon as I can. Mm-hmm. Hey, this <laughs> week, please don't go on a cruise. Please, well, especially don't go on a cruise right now. But yeah. Yeah. don't go anywhere. You're, please don't book any vacations, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. And, and it's pretty much a guarantee that uh, you're going to be shooting at least two days. If you're in two episodes, you're probably going to be shooting two days, even if I were to make those two episodes work together. I, mm-hmm. I like to give people that guarantee of at least two and at most four. Mm-hmm. We just finished a, uh, a four-day shoot most recently with eight full episodes, and that's the most we've done wow. in over a year uh, because we've uh, been gifted with the ability to rerun some episodes for a while. A lot of uh, a lot of times we would do six new episodes and two reruns, mm-hmm. uh, so one per month uh, that we would be shooting. Sometimes like as little as four episodes, so that's like a two shoot day, which is mm-hmm. great. But we had a we had a real doozy last week, but but we got it done. Um, nice. But yeah, it's it's one of those things. I'm kind of like crossing every finger I can when I send out confirmation emails, like please uh-huh. put, keep these dates open. And then after that, I say here are your shoot dates. And then here are your shoot days, uh, and then here are your call times, like the week before. I'm sending out everyone's call times of the of the days they're going to be on set. That is a 
hefty, hefty responsibility. Oh man, it's a it's a big one. And uh, luckily, we we haven't had to like really uh, pump the brakes uh, much lately on on anything. I mean, most people aren't quite as busy as they have been, mm-hmm. uh, which is bad and good for for both reasons. Uh, yeah. But it's helpful that a lot of people are more available to shoot now. But we've mm-hmm. had in the past, you know, and, and we're working with kids. So it's like, you don't yeah. know who's got a basketball tournament. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or who's got some like standardized tests they have to be there for or who's got advanced college classes they need to be here at Wednesday morning or whatever. So having to deal with a lot of kids as agents, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. they're just the prima just, donnas of the prima donnas. <laughs> the worst. Man. Coming in with their coffee and sunglasses. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had a rough <laughs> night last night. Yeah. I killed at least five high C's. I, yeah. cu- I colored outside the lines. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Always the trailer taking up like three parking spots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always yep. a lot of fight. How many uh, episodes per season? It or? depends on the season. <laughs> Okay. Um, because three years ago when we weren't really doing any reruns and we had two seasons a year, I would say we probably had around 15 or 16 episodes a season, 30 wow. episodes a year maybe. Wow, yeah. That's, um, impressive. That's very impressive. But the number is lower now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. And so it shoots in kind of like two day chunks, like you said, or, or four day chunks or just four day at most. And then, uh, at, at, at least two, I mean, with it's generally two episodes a day. Gotcha. Yeah. Which means that we are burning through pages oh, just, every yeah. day. Just flying through them. Yeah. And that's where the multicam aspect is really, it comes in handy. So let's talk a little bit about the multicam aspect. We're sure. shooting with three cameras. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a particular workflow going on there, like to like between using the three cameras and and getting the page count and all that kind of stuff? Uh, that's kind of just really been a, a long form of trial and error that has now thankfully become a more somewhat oiled machine, so to speak. Nice. Uh, but originally, uh, Connect was like just two cameras, and then we were just like, we just got to add another one in the mix. Now that we're getting more characters, we have to have a wide shot and then the close up on either yeah. side. Uh, and that is first that pretty much changed the game yeah. beyond just yeah. having very, very talented actors who can, who are prepared and just know their stuff whenever they show up. And what's kind of cool about having as big a cast as we do is that like the talent is a domino effect to other talent. So it's like maybe someone showed up for a shoot and they're not quite as prepared. Well, it's like, Hey, you're in a scene with three other people that like, they know their stuff. So it's kind of evident that, you know, you're, you're, you're we're kind of losing you here. Mm-hmm. So after the next show, they're like, all right, I'm going to be on it. And I think because of that, like we've had such, such talented actors that have just been a, a positive example for anyone else that's been a part of it. So they've done a great job. And then with the three cameras set up, it's, it's great because it's like, okay, we got everything on this side. We got everything on that side. Let's do one more run for safety or whatever. Yeah. Um, but like, like I said, with the talent, like we're kind of sometimes getting some in one take anyway. Yeah, but, I was about to um, ask. Uh, if, if anything, it's like, oh, we need to get their entrance or exit again. Okay, sure. Uh, but, but yeah, the, the, the three camera setup has really been helpful for us to work a lot more efficiently. Um, and then in the editing room, uh, I mean, that's, that's more something that other Grant can talk about. Or uh, Christina, <laughs> Christina mm-hmm. Gray, who is our uh, other filmmaker. On set, but I think it's been very helpful for them just because it's it's more material to work with. Oh yeah, um, you never know whenever you're going to need a cutaway of someone just reacting. Whenever someone maybe flubbed a line that we kind of had to Franken shoot it <laughs> to get it to work. Yeah. Um, so instead, you have like Mike going like, mm. whenever it's like, oh, this person is just kind of like trying to teach the point and they're having trouble remembering it. But uh, yeah, it's it. I, all that to say, it works. It's great. We love it. Yeah. It sounds like a fun set besides the sound guy complaining about the cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> These darn cabinets. Oh, they're so loud. <laughs> loud. <laughs> they, they, that's the one downside is the sound stage is directly connected to the, to the dining the, area. The, so yeah, like the, around the noon. Of, mm-hmm. it's I will just, say it's a downside only for you, I think, because I think anyone else is like, oh, wait, the, we, the room we eat in is right next door? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah that's, that's true. That's just a specific Brian down there. That's yeah. true. Oh, dang it. 
<laughs> Nick, so I just now you... noticed you have a cat behind you. I'm so sorry. I know, right? Sorry to derail. I saw him, <laughs> him or her swiveling with you. Yeah, Ooh. she she's been hanging on pretty well. This is my oh. grump. This is my grumpy face cat. He's she's okay. Little, little Buttercup. Oh, Buttercup. yeah. Oh, and, sorry, didn't mean to yeah. derail us there. Oh yeah, it's just kind of it's kind of an odd thing to just I probably should have mentioned. <laughs> oh, there's a living creature behind oh you. He has yeah. a familiar. Yeah, look out! <laughs> this scarf is just really realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Marlow House is a makeup and hair services company that specializes in special event and production. Whether it's a wedding, a movie, a TV show, zombie apocalypse, Marlow House is here to save the day. Marlow House's client coordinator assesses clients' needs and assigns the best stylist for the job, completed with invoicing and follow up feedback. Owner and makeup artist Tony Marlowe cares about giving every client in production the highest quality and professionalism in hair and makeup. Check them out at MarlowHouse.com. That's M-A-R-L-O-H-A-U-S.com. So where is the show distributed? Everywhere. <laughs> it's all around us. Bars, yeah. theaters. <laughs> Your it's coming from you inside it. the house. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so uh, like Laura said earlier, it, it does play at all of our campuses. Uh, so physically, you know, a, a kid that's going to be in the Connect room during a service uh, at, at a Life Church campus will see it there in, in the Connect room. But also it's available on what we call uh, open uh, open network, which is essentially just like, the church, Life Church, gives all of its assets, everything it makes, away for free to any church that wants it. So, um, yeah, we distribute on YouTube. Uh, we play physically in Life Church campuses, um, but also, if you know your hometown church or whatever wanted to use this, it's we could give you the video files and any of the teaching material that goes along with it. You know, totally for free. Uh, so awesome. it's just distributed in those places and then anywhere anyone wants it too. That's so great. And that's a, a that's a really important point that I want to kind of touch on because I, I feel like a lot of, you know, large churches like Life Church kind of gets a, a bad rap of like, well, they're just spending all this money on stuff <laughs> and oh, they're making millions off of a Bible app. Right. You hang out with some weird people, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone who talks like that. This <laughs> is what they say. <laughs> you got to stop hanging around Jimmy Stewart's yeah, ghost. <laughs> oh, yeah. So how much money do you guys make off of all of this? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're both just uh, on staff, uh, salaried yeah. employees. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, like I said, it's just, it's just given away for free. So, yeah. And I is keep that, thinking that, you know, because there are other, there's other groups that, that do sell materials <clears throat> to yeah. other churches and all that kind of stuff. And that's, that's their whole business model. And I'm just like, ballpark me, ballpark me. How much money do you think <laughs> if you guys actually monetized all this kind of stuff, how much money are y'all willingly not taking by giving all this stuff for free, including like the Bible app and all that. Oh, whoa. Oh God. Including the Bible app. More money than I think I could put into words. Yeah. A <laughs> hundred billion. <laughs> my life my life I, I mean, dreams that I would ever see in my life. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, the, the, the Bible app just had, Oh gosh. What was it like? A, like 250 million or something downloads or something recently. Something crazy. I'm, sure. I'm not sure. And if that was like, if you even charged like a dollar per download, that's like right. 250 million dollars that y'all right. just gave away. Yeah. Listen, yeah, I'm gonna need to talk to your execs uh, because <laughs> I feel like they're missing out on a golden opportunity. <laughs> I think what Brian's trying to get at is that he wants a raise. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Oh, okay. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. No, but I think that's that's like I think that that's a really big deal, and that really kind of touches on y'all's heart. Is that you're clearly not in it for the money. <laughs> mm. Like you're well, giving all this stuff away for free, and I don't think a lot of people know that. It will, and, and, and for some people, like, you know, it, kind of like a philosophy of why the, the Bible app is, is still free. It's like, for some people, a dollar would be too much. So, like, why would we put that as a barrier in front of getting the message out there? So, yeah. 
you know, yeah, sure, there would be profits to be making to be made, but like that's that's not the goal. The goal is to spread the message, and so if cost would you know put a barrier in front of the message, then you got to get then then what's really the the point? Yeah, yeah, there's enough there's enough profits in the Bible app anyway. That's already just <laughs> ah, that's a good one. Say he's practicing good his one dad <laughs> jokes. <laughs> I like it. Jeez. It's better than me doing it on the cats. They're sick of it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 don't, I don't know if it's if it's anything worth like mentioning in the show. Or if you want to put anything up, like it is like we have PAs on set. We have like a, a lot of actors that we hire. Like they are paid actors, and not all of them are going to be believers. Like the ones that are going to be the teaching people, like our our lead cast. And a lot of our recurring characters, they, they are believers. Uh, uh, so it, a lot of their mission is like the same with uh, their ideals. But we'll have like guest characters and stuff on. They don't have to be someone who follows God or anything like that. It's just uh, sometimes like them being on set is the first time they even step into a church. Yeah. And that's an opportunity for us to be a positive example of that. Give them a good experience on set, but also be kind um, be uh, just very welcoming of them, of their, uh, of just because the, they're giving their talents to something bigger than themselves. So it's important that we honor that, whether that's even just for paid or for not. It's still in the end result going to be you know impacting kids everywhere. Uh, so that is a big part of like what happens is like it's you know we we're not always going to have everyone that's just like. A, a believer or whatever on set, but we have all we're welcoming of all, all people whenever we put this stuff together. Yeah. I love That's that. Awesome. So tell me, and this is, this is my second to last question. Why is this show so important? Hmm. Not everybody at once. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take this one, Brian. Okay. <laughs> I think, um, it's not always easy to know how to talk to first through third graders. And Sam, who I work with, is probably, she has a mind into first through third graders like I did not know an adult could have. And so any script that I write, we were talking about, you know, how do I make it funny for first through third graders or how do I make it, you know, something that is accessible to them. And I don't worry about it because I know that she will see every script and that she will ensure that it is going to speak to them, not just the humor, but what we're trying to get across to them too. And make sure that we're not talking in vague sort of abstract terms. Like it's, we're dealing, we're bringing up problems that kids are facing, like in concrete look, you can relate to this because this is what you're going through in school right now or this is what you're going through with your family right now and providing resources and the language that they need to bring up conversations, just everything that they need to um, get through struggles that they're facing in life. And I can't think of a lot of other... <laughs> shows out there that mm -hmm. are speaking in this way to this kind of audience. Right. Yeah. I, I think about it a lot that, you know, I, when I, I, I wish when I was in first through third grade at that age that like I did have a show like this to watch because mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I think whenever I was that age, like a lot of kids Christian content wasn't exactly very, very cool. <laughs> really right. or or funny or quite as entertaining i, I just as, remember as the is. velvet little you yes. remember the velvet things no, that they would like the put felt boards. oh oh yeah like the, the puppets oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they stick up on there yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. well yeah. those things i know what you're talking about i don't know yeah. the velvet <laughs> thing i don't know <laughs> <laughs> which that depends on which you know 60 year old lady was, he was having volunteering at your church at that time, how entertaining yeah. that actually was. So, mm -hmm. you know, if Ethel wasn't able to pull it all together, then you didn't have a lot of content out there to, to watch. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so really, I, and, and like, like I said before, you know, Laura and Sam are so, so talented in meeting kids like where they are 
and relating to them in ways that they really are like dealing with. I mean, whether it's, you know, oh, if I go to this birthday party, like this other person's going to be there and I don't know if I should because these friends are fighting or whatever. Or if it's like my grandma died and I don't know why, like how do I deal with that? Mm -hmm. Or my parents are splitting up. Like what am I even supposed to do right now? Um, So it's, there's a lot of like tough uh, issues that I think a lot of uh, material didn't really address beforehand that uh, this show is, is really hitting head on now um, that is, is really meaningful to a lot of kids. Uh, So that, that I think is why it's, it's important. Yeah. Um, But also like, it's, it's fun to watch. It's fun to be a part of. It's fun to do. And, and I think like I can at least speak for our actors uh, that, that everyone's been involved has a good time doing it. So it's not just something that we're just showing up to this gig because we have to, like everyone does want to be a right. part of it. And I think that comes across too in the end result. That's awesome. Ah, that's so cool. Also, we make the show for our first through third graders, but I can't tell you how many times I like write something. And then a month later, it's like, oh man, I'm really going through this hard time. Oh, yeah. Think back to oh, yeah. what did I just write a month? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> answer to what I'm going through right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. I should think of okay. Jeremiah 12, 11. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing we have. We haven't talked about the, the hand motions. The verse, motion. yeah. Yeah. The verse motions. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. verse motions that you like whenever they're talking about a Bible verse for that episode, they mm-hmm. it's, and it's helped me remember things. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it freaking <laughs> works, man. <Yeah. laughs> what are they called? New, mnemonic devices. Is that what they yeah. are? Yeah. It's yeah. Hand, sure. hand mnemonic devices. Mem- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Memory That's machine. Great. I don't know. Well, in a second, I'm going to ask you guys uh, what has made you laugh the hardest on set. But for the listeners, if you would mm. like to hear their answers, go to patreon.com slash Okie Show Show, and you can hear about all the hilarity that happens on set with Connect. Bonus content. Bonus Ooh. content. Well, Grant and Laura, thank you so much for giving us some of your time to talk about Connect and and everything behind the scenes and all the intricacies. It's been so fun to talk to you guys. It's so fun to get to work with you guys, but mm-hmm. like it's it's fun to like have you guys on on my show. Yeah. So we're in your oh, house. Oh, how the turntables. Yeah. He was cleaning up this whole time. He was all stressed about it. He was vacuuming. It was crazy, man. Everything's gotta be perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Now, Brian, do I get lunch for this too? Is this yes. just something like DoorDash is going to show up? Or? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah. send you guys some Chick-fil-A. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or and, some of the various other places that we always get for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be Chick-fil-A. Always, you know that? Now you said it. Now we're locked into the sponsor, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where well, can people uh, find more information about Connect? <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you'll you never find it, it that's yeah. the reveal. It doesn't exist. You can go to live.church slash media and find Connect through the Live Church website there. Or if you search for Connect HQ on any, you know, decent search engine, it will take you to the YouTube page for Connect and you can find more episodes there. And that's Connect with a K. K O N N. That's big. That's a specific spelling. We've, yeah. we've lived in this world for so many years, I forget to specify how to spell it. Yeah. Yes. K-O-N-N-E-C-T space H-Q. And then the silent W at the end, right? Ah, yes. He <laughs> so. thinks. And there's probably some, I don't know, what are they called? Umlauts? I think there's a few of those in there. Yes. Yeah. Umlauts. Maybe. I got to, so, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, if, I, I just like Basically, that word. <laughs> if you want to watch an episode of Connect, you must pass the first five tests. Yep. Yeah. And then you will be worthy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a penitent man shall pass <laughs> well guys thank you so much for coming on the show uh, it's always a pleasure and uh, y'all have a wonderful night thank you, you. Yeah. thank you so much man that was excellent that was fantastic what a couple of goofy professional kids what a people. great time with Grant and Laura that was so much fun talking to them I can't wait 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 I can't wait <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't. I can't wait until we have uh, Laura's brother Ash catch him on the show. Oh gosh, uh, that'll be a good one. I I, 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 I held that back the entire time. I Boo. didn't do it in front of the guests. You should be really proud of me. I wanna be the very best. 
no one no. ever was. Uh, uh, uh. Wake that's up every day singing that song. Yeah. But uh, no, that's that was super interesting. I I I love um, I love just every bit of that was like super informative, super cool. Like I really liked the uh, writing sessions too. Like uh, yeah, the writing seems, sessions for anything are always so fascinating to me. Yeah, of like just the the how something gets like birthed, an idea gets birthed like that or burped like that. Ooh. You know, I just. Premature bell. Oh gosh, premature. <laughs> but yeah, like they have a draft and then they have a thrashing session. Ooh, it which, sounds so epic. Which I'd never heard of. Like not, it, I've heard of that, but not like a phrase. So I've heard awesomely. of like a punch up session, but not yeah, necessarily like a thrashing. That, that's usually the one, but uh, I thought it was, when she didn't explain it at first, I thought she was saying like, yeah, then we, we get the, uh, writers ideas and then we bring them back for a thrash session <laughs> which it sounded like they were gonna go on to wrestlemania like are you ready for the thrash <laughs> session the thrashing? which i don't know how many jobs um have a thrashing <laughs> session or something like that you know All right, what i we, mean we, we cut to um nick it's your first day on the job uh oh shoot this is a terrible improv. All right, where where are we? <laughs> uh, we're in an office building. All right, we're in an office building. All right, we're we're at the we're at the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. Why not? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's a completely different cast of characters as opposed to what you're used yeah. to in the office. It's we're, a whole new group of people. We're we're next door at the Munder Difflin. At, we're we're at the Munder Difflin uh, Plastic Company. Yeah, Munder Difflin Plastic. And it's Nick's first day on the job. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, come on in. I, I, Nick, it's nice to have you on board. Uh, here's here's everybody. Uh, whoa, I didn't know you guys were going to come out and uh, greet me. Hi. Uh, just, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Nick. I'm a, I guess I'm, I'll just go into a little intro here. Uh, Nick, and I, uh, I'm just excited to, to join the team. Like, it, you guys all seem great. We're we're very very excited to have you here, and um, and we're actually just beginning uh, the day's thrashing session. Thrashing? I didn't I didn't see that in the um, welcome packet. Um, what? I'm I'm so sorry. I'm not prepared. What is the what is this thrashing? Well, session? here at the Munder Difflin Plastic Company, uh, uh -huh. we have daily thrashing sessions just to make sure that everyone knows their place. Okay. And, yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, so. As you can see behind me, we have an assortment of, uh, of, of whips and um, other devices. So these are, so this is like a motivational and like metaphorical thing, right? Of uh, Motivational, I, yes, I would say motivational. Okay, okay. Um, well, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn, I'm excited. So, now, uh, and, and remind me of the position that, uh, that, you're, that, that you're here to to intern for? Uh, I'm here to follow the guy who uh, makes the holes in plastic bottles. So ah. I, I've always been fascinated ever since I was a kid, like, you know, drinking from a, so from a soda bottle. And it's just like, how'd that hole get there? You know, I just can't wait to learn, you know, excited. Ah, well, you know what? Lucky for you, the hole makers are gonna be first in line for your thrashing. Oh. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is awesome. Hole makers. All right, Ted. Big old huge Ted, 6.5 Ted. Why don't you give Nick here a good old thrashing? Who do you think you are? Coming in here with your like bright eyed and bushy tailedness and just being excited for work? What's wrong with you? I. Whoa, okay. Um, sorry, I. Uh, is there, do I, am I supposed to respond or no, Who, what you think it's your place to come in here and say stuff? Uh, uh, this is a thrashing session. You sit here and you take it. Jeremy, your turn. Okay. Um, you are the worst and your hair is stupid and I feel like you should cut it and you're probably going to give us all COVID. Jeremy, I'm going to trash your trashing session. Your trashing sessions 
Trashy sessions for the past couple weeks have been way below par. Look at you know our company's motto. Look at look right up there. It's it's on the sign there. You look walk past it every single day. You know what it means. Say it to me, buddy. Say it to me. It says, "Give them a good thrashing." Give them a good thrashing at the Munder Difflin Company. That's what we're about. Plastics comes second. That's what it says on all of our business cards. Uh, you know what? That's it's absolutely true. And that's where Sally is really the best at. Sally, get in here and give Nick a good old-fashioned thrashing. I swore I wouldn't do it anymore. I swore. I swore that they keep pulling me back in. I thought I was done with the thrashing. But then I see this kid Nick over here walking in, and he didn't even fill up the coffee yet. If that's, that's the first thing you're supposed to do. It's the first you're thing you're intern, supposed to do, Nick. Intern coffee. Intern coffee intern. It's it's in the name. It's not no no it's not, but it's almost in the name. <sighs> oh, I forgot. I'm supposed to give you a good whipping as well with one of these cat of nine tails. Whip. 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 Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. We we talked about this in the last few weeks as well. You don't make the sound. You whip hard enough so that we hear the sound and it reverberates. And as it's reverberating off the walls, it's reminding us that we're a team and that we're all here to make each other miserable and get through the day. Because misery loves, say it with us, company. company. All right, let me try it again. Um... I'm not sorry. Ow. Ow. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know I'm not supposed to talk. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to talk. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry I haven't gotten the coffee. I'm sorry. I just... What is this thrashing? What? What is the point of this? What? Why is this a part of your every day? How does it's this help? how we motivate people. Welcome aboard, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and say... Man, Munder Difflin is a rough place to work. I don't know if I'd want to work there. But at the same time, at the same time, I don't know if I could like, I would like it if it was a daily, but if it was like a weekly thrashing session of like just venting everything out like that, I mean, <laughs> like. You know what? I, I think that, that would actually be healthy. Right? Like if yeah. you got to really stand up and be like, you're eating all the Oreos and you're eating all the, like, and. Just yeah. getting it out there, and everyone's on the same level with it. Which reminds me, Nick, we're going to have to have a talk after we cut. Why do you have that whip? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you liked what you heard and you would like to be a part of it yourself, be sure to check us out at patreon.com slash okishowshow. And in the meantime, you can look at our social medias at okishowshow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Let's face it, Twitter, yeah, we're not very active on there, but we're going to try to get better about it. And uh, in the meantime, you guys have a wonderful next two weeks. We'll see you uh, in the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. But I repeat myself. And that's pretty I much hope, it. I hope you have a wonderful week and a half. And so that that last half of the week is really bad. And so that we can shoot back up and pick you back up and send your spirit soaring into that next two week chunk. That's and what you I know what? If you don't tune back in, you're going to get a good old fashioned thrashing. Mm hmm. Join our, join our thrash sesh. We'll be doing it over Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. We'll see you guys in the next two weeks. Okay, bye. The Oki Show Show is a mostly harmless media podcast recorded at Tower Studios in Oklahoma City. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a five-star rating. If you're a business or industry professional that would like to advertise on the podcast, email info at okishowshow.com. Rates starting as low as $25.